I love snazzifying things. If it's a plain sweatshirt, if it's my jeans, or if I need to mend something, I do just generally just end up snazzifying it. And I think it's such a fun way of upcycling your items or just maybe adding a bit of personality to something that is maybe a little old or maybe a little plain. So in this video, I am gonna try and show you all the different ways you can snazzify, whether that be by hand or by machine. And I'm gonna try and show you the different like placements and hopefully inspire you to snazzify your own item. And you might be here because you have bought a snazzify kit from me. So let's go through all the things you would expect in a snazzify kit. Each kit has been carefully curated with a main feature fabric, including some other little bits of feature fabric, a big old bunch of scraps. This is only a little bit. In your kit, you will receive a lot more with lots of different textures, different prints, all that kind of match this main fabric. And guys, you know how much I love my trimmings. Well, you will be receiving a whole load of trimmings. Again, this is just a small amount just for this project, but you will be receiving a lot more. <laughs> for things like ribbon, bias binding, more ribbon, lots of lace, rickrack, the whole shebang. This pack is all about trying to find things that match this main fabric. So whatever I have, I will chuck into this main kit. And along with all of this, you will receive a bunch of buttons and beads to go in your kit. And again, they have been carefully curated to match this main bit of fabric. You'll also receive a sewing needle and some different colored threads. Now let's go ahead and start putting this on a sweatshirt. So this is the sweatshirt I am going to be working with today. It is from Vinted, it cost me four pound. And as you can see, it is like a blank canvas to work on today. Just a note, if you do buy anything secondhand, make sure you do wash it and dry it before working on this project. Right, so let's work on placement first. And as you can imagine, there are endless possibilities with this. So what I recommend is starting with the bigger main feature pieces. Let's have some fun. I'm just gonna just place trimmings and bits of fabric in different places and then it gives you an idea of all the different possibilities you can go for. See what's amazing about this is that you have freedom to do whatever you want. If you wanna have trimming all the way down the sleeves, you can. If you want trimming all the way around here, you could even try and follow the seam lines or whatever seam lines you have on your item. There are so many different possibilities. And another great thing that you can do with fabrics is you can manipulate them to create different effects. So for example, if you had the ribbon, it doesn't just have to be stitched on straight down. You can tie it into a bow and hand stitch it on to create this nice kind of like cottagey core <laughs> look. See what I mean? You can create ruffles with the lace. So again, it doesn't have to be stitched down. If you wanna add a bit more texture, why not just put some pins in and create like a little ruffle like I did here with my sleeves. And if you wanted to, I'm not gonna do it, because I actually love this piece. Um, you can actually cut around bits, you can cut through bits. So even for the sweatshirt that I'm wearing now, I've actually cut a dolly in half and stitched it underneath a little cat design. So if you wanted to just have half of a dolly there, then you absolutely can. So I recommend grabbing your trimmings and just start manipulating them however you want. You could even create like a little rose just by spinning this around your fingers a bunch of times and then carefully pinning it and hand stitching it on to create an almost flower shape. 
You can even create shapes with the fabrics provided. So for example, if I wanted to make, let's say a little strawberry and just go ahead and create a little shape. So there's my little strawberry. I'm gonna do this as a little leaf. If you're not super confident with fabrics, then go ahead and just draw the shape onto the fabric first. And you can also interface it to give it a bit more of a sturdiness when you go ahead and sew. It's not my best work. <laughs> but if I was to then stitch this down, I would then maybe get some black embroidery thread or maybe a fabric marker and just draw some like little pips on there. And then I can just go ahead and stitch it on like this. And you can do that with any of the fabrics. If you wanted to make some flower shapes, maybe you wanted to create a whole scene either based around this or just whatever you want. I've even done some needle turn applique with bias binding. So with this, I could maybe even do like a nice little spindly vine and then the bird could just perch on top. Again, a really cool idea. So I want you to have fun with your scraps. Just go crazy. Do what you think feels best and then when you're happy with the design, start pinning it on and then if you can, try it on just to make sure that things are placed the way you want them to. the design I have gone for so let's go ahead and start pinning it so when you go to pin you're basically going to pin through only the top layer so if you put your hand through the sweatshirt you'll be able to pin quite easily Okay, that should hold up quite nicely. So I'm actually gonna quickly try this on just to make sure that I'm happy with the placement. Cause sometimes when you put things on, you realize that maybe some bits are too low or they're just not attaching right. So let's go ahead and try this on. Okay, so be careful not to stab yourself with your pins. Um, I'm really happy with the placement except for this bow. I think it's too far over the edge and it just looks a bit weird. So we're actually going to place it somewhere a bit more central. We could even place it so it's coming off the sweatshirt. That might be quite a nice feature. So I'm literally just gonna pin this on here. And then, yeah, I'm really happy with the placement. Obviously this is gonna be up here. We're gonna have a nice little frilly, uh, thing here which doesn't look very good at the minute but it will when it's stitched on so yeah I'm really pleased with this it's looking very busy and very me and hopefully yours will look very you right so we are now going to secure all of your bits onto your item you're going to want to identify the bits that are at the very bottom or just the bits that have the most trimmings or fabric on top of them I'm going to show you how to do this by a machine and then for the top layers I'm probably going to hand stitch and show you some different techniques with that as well. Very lucky to own a quilting machine so I have all of these stitches at hand. If you have just your normal sewing machine you should have a zigzag stitch and a straight stitch. So I'm going to show you how to add things on with a zigzag stitch. So depending on what machine you have, you might have like little dials that tells you what stitch length you're going to go for. So mine is electronic and I'm actually going to shorten this. So the five refers to the length of the stitch. So when it comes to the zigzag, it will be at the largest size, which is pretty big. So we're going to reduce that to I think four or three point five. And then as you can see on this one here, this tells you how close the zigzags are going to be. So I am gonna do mine at 1.5. So this is what it looks like. I recommend grabbing a bit of fabric scrap and just testing out the different sizes and lengths that you want to do. So I've already identified this is probably the piece that I need to start with. I know this is underneath it, but because this is covering it, when I stitch here, it doesn't matter because it's going to be stitched down on top. So this will be secure because of this one. Make sure not to catch the back or whatever is underneath in your stitching. So we're going to open it up and place it under. 
when you're about to reach the next piece I would just lift it up slightly and stitch further down that way this is secure and you don't go ahead and stitch on top of this because when I what I want to do is I want to do a nice little decorative stitch around this bit here <laughs> moving on just clip all of your threads that way they won't irritate you against your skin when you wear it be careful not to clip your item <laughs> I've done that before so this is how it's looking I've stitched down all of the main bits and then I've got a few pins where I want to hand stitch some bits on. So I want to hand stitch this on, I want to hand stitch this, the bow, and I also want to hand gather this ruffle and hand stitch that also. If you're not a fan of the frayed edges, then you can actually unpick and just turn the fabric and stitch again. Or if you've got some anti-fray glue, that could also work. But I quite like the effect. I quite like the scrappy look. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a few more pins in places and then grab my thread and needle. So what I'm planning to do is use the thin normal sewing thread to stitch down this little crochet dolly and the bow and also hand gather this. And then I'm gonna use the embroidery thread to do a little decorative stitch for this and I might add some little decorative stitches to this as well, we'll see. So I have hand stitched this little ruffle at the neckline. I've also hand stitched at certain points on this little dolly. That way when I wear it, it shouldn't flop over too much. And then I've also hand stitched the bow. So we're gonna go ahead and do some decorative stitches with the embroidery thread. So all the Snazzafine kits do come with a little bit of embroidery thread and a needle that is big enough to have the thread going through. <laughs> So we're gonna stitch this on. So I've done a little knot at the end of my thread and we're gonna go in underneath, take the little pin out, and then I'm just gonna start at any point and come through. Ooh. Okay. To do this, basically you're gonna come up in the fabric and then you're gonna go down at the very edge running parallel to that stitch that you've just come out of. And then when you do your new stitch, you're gonna go to the side to repeat the step that you've just done. Like that. So there you go, you've got your little stitch on flower and you've got this really sweet little decorative handmade looking uh, technique, which I think looks really sweet. And if you wanted to, you could do some little decorative stitches. I love doing a little running stitch. So I'm just gonna add a few little straight stitches just to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, the last thing I want to add is some buttons and beads. So again, every pack will, every Snazzify kit will come with a selected bunch of buttons and beads so I'm going to go ahead and just start placing them where I want and then we can go ahead and hand stitch them on. Love, love, love. Let's go ahead and try this on. Ta -da. I don't 
know about you, but I just feel like things are so much happier when things are snazzified. I mean, this has gone from a boring, plain sweatshirt to a unique one-off <laughs> snazzy piece. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you would like to buy your own little snazzify kit, they are carefully curated and you do get a load of stuff with it, then head to my website to the little DIY section and you can make your own. And as always, please like, comment and subscribe. It really does help and I absolutely love doing this. So if there's any other tutorials or snazzifying, I don't know, whatever you want, just let me know in the comments and I can write it on my to-do list. But anyway, I will see you next time and yeah, bye.